Hi, I'm Paul, and this is my channel, AlgoWorld, and I thought we'd kick things off with a, a, a simple little program in JavaScript. Uh, we're going to create a finite state machine. Uh, for those of you that don't know, a finite state machine uh, simply takes uh, some input and, uh, and outputs a result based upon whether or not the uh, input is part of that machine's language. For example, if we created an exclusive or finite state machine, only, uh, only words passed in that uh, contain proper symbols will uh, create a useful output. For example, if we configured our uh, finite state machine to accept uh, ones and zeros, then uh, something like an, an A would not be accepted by that machine. Anyway, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get started. So we'll start off by creating a, uh, a class, and I'm, uh, I'm oh so creative. Hence, I will call this a finite state machine. We have to create a constructor inside that class in order to uh, build, uh, build this uh, machine. Now, inside our constructor, I, I think we should, uh, we should add some variables. Um, I don't want to have kind of a messy setup, so what I like to do is uh, group together a whole bunch of variables as an object and just kind of put them uh, in here like this. So we'll create a, a current state, so whatever our machine is uh, currently at as it's reading the, uh, the string of inputs. A final state which dictates whether or not the uh, machine outputs anything. We'll call this final state Q1. You can call it whatever you like. I, I don't think it, uh, it really matters. You can call this uh, final, final state uh, Batman symbol if you like. Uh, it's your program. You have the power here. And our initial state, where the uh, program has to start, well, I'll just call that Q sub naught because that's what I learned in school. All right, next. Any finite state machine is going to have some way to uh, transition between its states. If it didn't, then it couldn't possibly uh, give you any sort of uh, uh, output because, well, it, it, it wouldn't be able to, uh, to reach it. Now, in finite state machines, we call these delta, uh, not uh, delet, uh, delta. <laughs> we call them uh, delta functions. And the uh, delta function, it requires an input, and it also has to know where it's started. And if we don't define a uh, starting place, I want it to default at uh, something in our states, and in this case, our initial state, because I, I think that makes the most sense. <laughs> All right. Now, inside of our uh, delta function, if our input uh, doesn't have any length, so the length of zero, then I don't want you to actually do anything. Uh, just return out of it. <clears throat> you're done. Go home. But if you do, then we have to get to that uh, current input. And the current input, it's always going to be the... There we go. It's always going to be the... Per <sighs> that would have been... Uh, quite the error to make. Anyway, uh, 
once we've uh, got the current input, we actually don't need the, uh, the first input to be on our input anymore. So what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, slice it off. And we slice it off just like that. Uh, next, we got to map this out via this dot transition. Oh, we haven't actually made that uh, function yet. You know what? We're going to call it mapping and we're going to make it just a hot second. And what does it take? Well, it takes a uh, state. All right, and uh, oh, what uh, what do we do from here? Well, our current state is still null. That's not what I want. There we go. Hmm. It would probably help if I uh, let the uh, computer know exactly where that was. Uh, current state is still null, so... Ah, yep, we have to go to the mapping. We have to get that, uh, that value that we uh, fetched previously when we did the uh, transition.mapping. And that'll be for the current input. And from there, we can do a this dot transition dot delta. We can call that uh, call this recursively. So anytime there's still uh, some next input, it will step through this uh, uh, function over and over again until it terminates. All right, now that is all. Uh, that is all well and good, but we now have to define our mapping function. And what does mapping f uh, the mapping function take? It takes a state. All right, so we need to create a. Uh, a map. So in JavaScript, it uh, comes natively with this nice little map object. <clears throat> and from here, we can actually just uh, start to set things. So we can set uh, keep sub not to uh, a a new map in and of itself. Which contains a pair of arrays. Uh, let's do a zero. And that maps over to keep some not. And we'll do one maps over to Q sub one. All right, now we can do the next uh, part of the state map. Um, this will be for uh, Q sub one. Needs a new map. Really need that dialog box out of my face. <laughs> there we go. And uh, and now that we're here, we can uh, we can define the rules for uh, for this one. So if it's a zero, we want that to map back to itself. All right, and if our input is a one, 
Well, I want it to go back to its initial state. <clears throat> and uh, after, uh, after all that, I think we'll close this out by returning our uh, state map value with a quick get method on the state that we originally passed in and asked for. Right. <clears throat> All right, now outside of our constructor, we'll pass in the only method that you'll actually be calling uh, off an instance of this uh, object. And that is, of course, evaluate, because, well, how else, you, how else are you supposed to use this thing if you can't uh, evaluate something, right? So we start off by calling the delta function, pass in our input, then we create a variable for result. Now, if this uh, state Whoops. Current state is equal to this dot states dot uh, the final state. We're going to use this uh, ternary operator. Uh, if it's true, then I want the result to be true. And if it is false, then I want that result to return false. And now all we must do is return the value of the result. Now outside of this, we can uh, create our object. And I guess, you know, because I'm so creative, I'll call it obj. <laughs> create our finite state machine. And object, uh, well, we'll do a console log to object dot uh, evaluate, and we'll give it a string now, like uh, 101. Got an even number of ones. I'm expecting this to return false. What do you know? Returns false. And uh, you can check this. You can enter other values to see if uh, you get the uh, correct answer. Uh, but uh, no matter how big the uh, input is, if it has uh, an even number, of ones, it's always going to be false. If it has an odd number of ones, it's always going to be true. It uh, it does not care how long your input is; it will get around to every last bit of it. Well, thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you'll uh, like and subscribe to this uh, channel, and I hope to see you next time.